What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to focus on why we need to get rid of the A plus and the A minus. And you might think this is an odd topic to tackle but give me a second to explain why. We all know there's a lot of issues with our educational system and I think one of the issues is how we evaluate students. I've seen many proposals on how to change a grading system and a lot of these proposals are pretty radical and I just don't think they're going to happen. One, because our educational system is really resistant to change, which is not a good thing, but that's what we're dealing with. And two, I think a lot of these ideas are really difficult to implement and they're not going to work for everybody. But there is a simple solution that your teachers, professors, schools can start doing right now that I think would actually really improve the grading system. And that's to get rid of the A plus and the A minus. So first let's go over some of the basics of the US grading system. So an A plus is a 4.33 or sometimes it can be a 4.0, it really depends. Most schools do make an A plus a 4.0. An A is a 4.0, an A minus is a 3.67, a B is a 3.0, and so on. You can just look at the table. I think this grading system is a lot more strict than other countries. In some countries, they don't even have grades. So I think the US, while definitely not the hardest, it definitely has a pretty strict grading system. As someone who probably has gotten more A pluses than A's in my life, I think I'm in a pretty unique position to talk about this because I know what it takes to go from the A minus to the A to the A plus and the issues with the system. Another question is why are there pluses and minuses in grades in the first place? So grades are basically used to distinguish students based on their achievement level. So a teacher knows who needs more help and who doesn't and for colleges, jobs, etc to see your achievement level. The pluses and minuses are used as a basis of distinguishing students within a letter grade. So I do see a use in differentiating achievement level for a C minus, C plus, B minus, B plus, but it's a whole other story when we look at the A minus, A and A plus. And that's because we're differentiating between students that all have a solid understanding of the material. And I just don't think that's necessary. If an A student and an A plus student both understand the material really well, like what is the use in differentiating between them? There's very little benefit to doing this, but there are so many downsides. It's unfair, it's unnecessary, it's discouraging, it's stressful, and it's really a big waste of time. It's unfair because the difference in grades is almost arbitrary at this level. Here are some of the most common ways that I see the differences in grades at this level manifest. Misreading of questions, some students kiss up to the teacher for those extra subjective points, extra credit activities, incorrect or subjective grading, naturally intelligent students get a question right that wasn't taught well or at all by the professor. On the test, something came up that you missed while another student, something that they missed, didn't come up on the test. Trivia that isn't even important to understanding any of the concepts in the class. It's also unfair because the A minus, A and A plus skill vary by each class. For example, one of my classes might have an A minus as a 90 to 91%, while another has an A minus as a 90 to a 94%. Because of this lack of parity, I don't think that A minus, A and A plus are good factors in distinguishing, oh, you got an A plus in this class versus an A minus in another. And that's not even going into the differences between different schools and with different countries. And this system is also discouraging. It's extremely discouraging for a student to study so hard and understand all of the concepts yet still get an A minus, which is a 3.67, which is kind of ridiculous. Students feeling cheated by the system is one of the biggest ways to discourage their performance in school. The B or C grade should be a clear marker that someone didn't understand all the concepts or material required in the class, while an A should be that you did. And to have that in between where you can understand everything and still get an A minus, that's not an effective grading system. Reinforcement and punishment should be clear in order to be effective. And for obvious reasons, being graded on such a tight scale is extremely stressful. And students end up basically studying trivial details and focusing more on grades than on the material they're learning. And also this stress leads to an increased association between school and studying and negative emotions. 
and again, that's just bad for learning. And personally, from my experience, the biggest reason we need to get rid of the A- and the A+, is it leads to a massive waste of time. I can't tell you how many thousands of hours that I've wasted learning trivial details, overstudying, going multiple times over the same material, going over the same material with a different source like a textbook to get one trivial detail that wasn't in my notes, even taking the time to understand the unnecessary nuances of a concept because the teacher thinks that their subject is the greatest subject in the world and the most important and they need you to understand everything about this concept even though these trivial details don't even matter. And like I've said before, a lot of the differences in the A minus, A and A plus grade are due to arbitrary reasons. And one of the only ways for a student to bypass this is to massively overstudy, which is what I did, and which leads to a huge waste of time. When I say that learning all of these trivial details and taking the time to overstudy was a massive waste of time, I don't mean that this information will never help me at all, these little trivial details. Maybe one pearl of information will help me once in my life if I still remember it. The key is, can that time be better spent elsewhere? And the answer to that is a resounding yes. And that kind of ties into my last point, that the A- and the A+, are just unnecessary. I'm sure the counter argument is that if we don't have A- and A+, there's going to be more people with solid A's. How are we going to distinguish between them? Well, the first thing is, right now we're distinguishing A minus A and A plus, and just because we have a way to distinguish students doesn't mean it's a good way. In fact, right now I think it's a really crappy way to distinguish students. This person got all A minuses, so is that a 3.67. This person got all A's and has a 4.0. So now the 4.0 student is so much smarter and better. No, that's stupid. They're basically almost the same, and the way we're distinguishing a 3.67 from a 4.0 is asinine, to be honest. Consider this exaggerated hypothetical example. You have a student who has all A minuses, a 3.67 GPA, and you have a student who has straight A's and has a 4.0. If you just have these factors, who would you pick? We all hear that grades don't matter, but most of us would lean towards picking the person with a 4.0. And why is that? It's because of the idea of a meritocracy where we want to reward people who work harder. And the person with a 4.0, even if they spent more time learning useless crap, they still probably studied more. And so we would want to reward that. So I think most people would pick the 4.0 student. However, we also recognize that grades aren't a measure of intelligence. And the difference is even more insignificant when you're comparing someone with A minuses and A's. So the 3.67 candidate honestly should be just as good as a 4.0 candidate. So we're kind of left in a catch-22. If we pick the 4.0 student, we're rewarding hard work, but, we're, but they're almost equal students, so we're kind of lying to ourselves. If we pick the 3.67 student, then we're not rewarding hard work. So where do you, what do you pick? And one of the easiest ways to solve this is to make a system where people aren't forced to waste their time and work endlessly for good grades, make it a lot more lenient. And if we remove some of this incentive to overstudy by getting rid of the A- minus and the A+, plus, right now we'd be left with two students with solid A's, so how are you going to distinguish between them? And the answer is based on their experiences and activities outside of school. Currently there's way too much emphasis on grades and standardized testing, and one of the reasons is honestly because a lot of students don't have the time to do too much outside of school. We're so busy bogged down sitting in our seats that it's no wonder that the older generation tells us we're not ready for the real world. And part of that reason is because the older generation is forcing us to sit our butts down and study all day instead of actually doing things. So getting rid of some of this incentive to study so much and do other things I think will be better for us and better for the system. I know this was a longer, more involved video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any ideas below that you yourself thought of to change the educational system or anything else you'd want me to talk about and maybe I can do it in a future video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.